hog hunting in the USA. We're in Texas with a night sight and a crossbow. I would compare a crossbow really within 50 yards to any rifle you want to get out there. And what if you bag your boar? Well, Kayak Bryn is in Hungary to look at traditional recipes. We've got Hello Charlie, we've got Hunting YouTube, and we've got news with a spot of Jurassic Park. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. America has a hog problem. They are spreading like wildfire, and in states like Texas, they're rife. The numbers have grown fast in the last 10 years because there's really no predators that can control them. And the numbers in Texas alone are estimated at 5 million pigs. Just like boar in Europe, they're destructive, but because of their numbers and pest-like status, the Americans approach boar hunting in a different way. For a start, you can use anything from an air rifle to a bow to a crossbow. Plus, you can use night vision, which is why Phil and Dave Craven from Night Sight are stateside. They're on a fact-finding mission, and it looks as if their range of products could help tackle this pig of a problem. We're being looked after by Terry Tate, a hunter and the brains behind the custom Big Boar air rifle brand. More from Terry Tate of the Lone Star State in a bit because this evening he's invited his friend and outfitter Larry Large to go hog hunting with a crossbow. They're extremely fast, extremely deadly. I, I would compare a crossbow really within 50 yards to any rifle you want to get out there. So what is the appeal of hunting with a weapon that's been in existence since the 4th century BC? Uh, I shoot a dart and crossbow. It's a Viper SS. It's a very, very good, very expensive crossbow. It's, I think, a 175 pound draw weight. It shoots 340 feet a second. And at 40 yards on a 200 pound hog, it will blow a bolt completely through that hog. Larry organizes bow and crossbow hunting across the US. He has seen the future of hunting and he says it belongs to the crossbow and the bolt. I really believe that uh, crossbow is gonna preserve our right to hunt because now we can get young kids, women that aren't strong enough to pull a boat, they can go hunt elk, they can hunt deer, they can hunt hogs, they can go hunt a grizzly bear if they want to. I just think they're great. The boar arrive right on cue. They're aware that something isn't right, but Larry doesn't hesitate and goes for the large male at the front of the group. The bolt lights up as it flies. It looked like a real good hit from where I was. He tracks the light given off by the end of the bolt and we find our hog just a few yards beyond the cover. When I shot, he was at 32 yards. I shot him right through the lungs with a Grim Reaper broadhead. They literally cannot go anywhere. I mean, what did this hog run? 25 yards? Yeah. And he's dead. That's the size of hole that puts in that hog's lungs. And I'm telling you, I don't care if you're an elephant. If that goes through your lungs, you're not good for very long. In some countries, the pigs are left where they fall as they're riddled with disease, but not in Texas. Larry calls it miracle food. I go to a cardiologist a lot. Told me this is the purest, best meat that you can eat in the United States. This hog will actually fight cholesterol. 
And I said, okay, sounds good to me. It just so happens I like it too. Very seldom when you get this old that something that's good for you really tastes good. The crossbow has been around for thousands of years. It's still doing its job and Larry loves it, especially when he's hunting hogs. Thank you, Larry. And if you want to find out more about the Nightsight range, go to nightsight.com. Now from Larry Large to Diminutive David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. A Scottish charity has been accused of the gratuitous slaughter of red deer. The Scottish Gamekeepers Association has lashed out at conservation charity the John Muir Trust for allowing the slaughter of dozens of deer on an estate in Scotland. In an open letter to members of the Scottish Parliament about the Noy Dart and Ascent deer culls, it said that the current cull numbers will quickly reduce the deer population to unsustainable levels if maintained. Actor Chris Pratt will only eat what he hunts. The 36-year-old Jurassic World star says he is starting a diet he calls the Game Plan, where he only eats wild game for a year. He announced his carnivorous plan in a comment under a picture of him on Instagram. He says he may cheat a bit too if offered steak, burgers, sushi, pepperoni, ham, eggs, chicken, lamb at Easter or a Thanksgiving turkey. A new Facebook group aims to be a trading post for cheap shooting in the UK. Fed up with trying to find shooting that suits the working man's pocket, Reese Laws, a regular on Hello Charlie, set up the group and has got 1,300 members in a week. Search Facebook for game shooting for the working man and woman. Now, do you hate Facebook but love social media? Well, if so, there's a new international social network for hunters at seemehunt.com. Despite the closure of yeswehunt.eu last year, it joins a growing tide of specialist groups, including hunttrophy.com, which we profiled a few weeks ago. Just in case you thought there weren't enough game fairs this year, Countryman Fairs has announced two new regional country shows. One we've mentioned already, the Broadlands County Show in Hampshire on the 1st to the 2nd of May. The other is the Nebworth Country Show in Hertfordshire on the 9th and 10th of July. Field Sports Channel has reached a landmark on the Chinese video platform Yuku. Thanks to a recent push after translating and uploading our latest Eagle Falconry film with Roy, Field Sports Channel now has 100,000 subscribers and clocked up 37 million views. Many Chinese are now fluent in a new street style of Mandarin, simply known as Crow. Australia could be getting its first hunting prisoner of conscience. Robert Borzak, one of the two Shooters and Fishers MPs in the New South Wales Parliament, was in loose coalition with State Premier Barry O'Farrell until O'Farrell banned hunting in national parks. Then the Shooters and Fishers Party started to block O'Farrell's legislation. Now Mr Borzak is being taken to court over a 12-year-old commercial dispute and he says it's because O'Farrell wants him in prison. And finally, in the presidential race to win the hearts and minds of American hunters, it looks like Ted Cruz is just ahead. I've looked at the candidates. Ted Cruz is my man. He fits the bill. In a new campaign ad, Duck Dynasty patriarch Phil Robertson endorses Ted Cruz as they go duck hunting together and joins the Republican presidential candidate in firing rifles into the sky. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Talking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. So, more summer game fairs filling up the 2016 calendar. But first, we have our winter shooting show at Stoneley Park in just a few weeks. Later on, Kai's in Hungary cooking up wild boar. Next up, let's see what you lot have been up to. It is Hello Charlie. Oh, Charlie, just in a flooded uh, Yorkshire after some rabbits and pigeons. All that comes along. Hello, Charlie. Tex Grabner here. As you know, I'm a collector of elephant rifles. Have you ever seen anybody shoot a flying clay bird with an elephant gun? You have now. Don't believe me?
Hello Charlie, Meg here in Southland, New Zealand. I just shot my first stag. That's it. Please send me your Hello Charlies via Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox or email charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Thank you for those. Now from New Zealand to Hungary where Kayak Bryn is learning to cook up a wild boar stew on a pavement. in Hungary where the boar run free and when they stop doing that they end up here in restaurants. Tamas from Wonderheart Hunting has asked his restaurant owning friend if Kai could come and see how to cook a traditional Hungarian wild boar dish. So already I've shot a young pig, a piglet, sizes and everything, and a yearling ewe, another small lamb. Now we come here to the restaurant, Tamas' friend, Pipak's restaurant, we've got to do traditional Hungarian cuisine. Now I'm hoping it's going to influence some of my cooking back at home. I already use a lot of paprika and I use a lot of some of their ingredients. But I'm going to see what the chef, Zoltan, in the kitchen can show me. To add some authenticity, we're taking over the pavement, but we start in the kitchen. There we go. While we'll be doing the stuff outside, we've also got another traditional dish being cooked inside the kitchen, and that's wild boar cheek with cabbage and bacon. Fantastic this is. It's so good. It's got it's got the cabbage with the sour cream. And I notice these are sour cream a lot in Hungarian cooking. The Hungarian style gnocchi without parmesan cheese. This is just with um, eggs, flour, potato, seasoning. You've got the confit wild boar cheeks, roasted tomatoes, cress, leaves, parsley. Absolutely fantastic. The eating of game is such an important part of what we hunters do, and we need to do it well. Otherwise, deep fried roadkill will never inspire others to partake. The meat's now browned, it's been cooking for a little bit. So, the next stage, put the seasoning in and get the rest of the ingredients in as well. So, Sultan, what's going to go in first? Tomato? Yep. Nice, fresh, juicy tomatoes. Only half. White pepper. It's inspired me to do some kind of street food-esque style recipes. I'm going to play around with using wild boar, mouflon or lamb. So it's given me a lot of ideas and inspiration. So I'm really excited to go home now and just get in the kitchen and do some bits. Having been guided by the experts, Kai is now going to create his own boar dish. It's not Hungarian boar, but from meat specialists, Kezis. Today we're using the Dutch oven. It's ideal for cooking outdoors, it's designed for cooking outdoors over campfires and take really traditionally people take these out on horseback. I've got one large onion here. Three cloves of garlic. I've got peppers, I've got green and yellow peppers. Now traditionally in Hungary they've got white peppers, but in our supermarkets you buy a lot of funky colour peppers. I've got green and yellow. You don't have to have wild boar in your back garden on one of your permissions. Here, from Kezi Meat Supplies, we've got some nice diced boar. One thing I'd say about Kezi, they're absolutely fantastic on their delivery. From Scotland, you can get it next day delivery from here in Kent. So, if you fancy a barbecue the next day, look at the weather, and it's looking good, and you fancy something a bit more exotic, then why not give them a call, order, and you can get yourself whatever species you want. They tend to do crocodile, python, you can get anything from venison, you name it, you can get it from them. So what I'm doing now, I'm softening the onions, the peppers and the garlic, and I'm also just searing the meat, browning off slightly. Then I'll add the tomatoes and some of the spices and some of the liquid. I'm gonna put in the tomatoes. These are vine tomatoes. Now while that's cooking, I'm just gonna put that taste, tablespoon and a half of Hungarian sweet paprika. I'm going to add about 300 grams of just beef stock, nice rich beef stock that should complement the boar. I'm just going to top it up with some water, maybe about half a pint or so. Now last but not least, we've got about a glass full of red wine left in this bottle. It's actually Hungarian wine. Oh, it smells lovely. 
and we're going to pop it into the Dutch oven and then that'll be us done. So we're going to cook it there, reduce it down until the meat's nice and soft and tender. Keep checking it, but it's going to take about two hours for that to cook. We'll just have a lovely hearty Hungarian style stew later on for dinner. Now, if you want any carbohydrate with this, you can put a potato, wrap it in foil, put it in the embers, it gives jacket potato for later on, or put a little pot on the side and cook some rice. This is perfect if you've gone camping, you want to go out for the afternoon for a few hours, you can leave it, leave it hanging, as long as it's in a safe place, a few logs underneath, and it'll survive off the embers and just keep it warm. So there you have it, wild boar with a hint of Hungary, a soupçon of Kent and a dash of Wales. Truly international cuisine. If you want to shoot and eat wild boar in Hungary, best drop Tamas a line. Go to wonderheart.co.uk Thank you Kai. And from Hungary to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Fancy some winter sun? Our Norwegian buddy Christopher Clausen has put up this film of hunting in the Eastern Cape with Matswani safaris. Carsten Otterson takes a Val Reedbuck at 355 metres, close to action with Beagle Boys rabbit hunting who are after white hares somewhere in North America. They get two with guns and hounds. Whitebone Creations is a Californian taxidermist that has a worldwide audience as a hunting channel. Here is its new film, Pig Hunting with the Olsons. Huntadventure.pl has a promo out for driven big game hunting in Poland. It promises a face-to-face -face with red deer, wild boar and other animals of the Polish forests between October and January. Another promo, Dustin Mizzel or Mizell, is on a monster white-tailed buck crossbow hunt in Alabama with South Coast Safaris and takes a buck scoring 322 inches. Do not get any American deer hunter started on what is or isn't a record, but take it from me, that is a biggie. Foul talkers are duck hunting in Australia in this trailer for their new DVD. It has been two years since their first Australian duck hunting DVD. This covers the 2014 and 2015 seasons showcasing the sport in the southern states of Australia. Wild fowling on a lake in Mother Russia now. Once you are over the Russian preamble, that is given that you do not speak Russian, this has good GoPro style duck hunting action on a big bleak piece of water. And finally a lad called Charlie Barker sends me a film of him clay shooting at Garland's Clayground in the English Midlands. He has launched the Pigeon and Fishing channel on YouTube. God bless it and all who sail in it. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight send it in via youtube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv well we are back next week if you haven't done so already please pop over to our website fieldsportschannel.tv where you can click to like us on facebook or follow us on twitter subscribe to us on youtube or even now on the website and we'll send you our newsletter about this and our other shows this show field sports britain at 7 p.m uk time every wednesday and this has been field sports britain good hunting good shooting good fishing and goodbye <laughs>